Lord, we ask that you will just prepare our hearts as we listen to your word this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Larry Osborne, in his book, Mission Trip, the five subtle shifts that sabotage evangelism and discipleship, written in 2014, he pointed out that most churches today are not eating the bullseye. He points out the five subtle shifts. We have focused, most of us have focused on decisions and not disciples. We have from obedience to doctrines, from persuasion to warfare, from people to numbers, and from Jesus to justice. In this book, Osborne reminds us that decisions, doctrines, warfare, numbers, and justice are important. But that should not be the focus. Our focus is what matters most, and that is what God wants. That's God's desire. We hit the bullseye when we, we focus on disciples rather than decisions. Obedience over doctrines. Persuasion, persuading people to follow Jesus rather than warfare. People over numbers and Jesus rather than justice. Let's ask ourselves, what are we focusing on? What are we targeting? What are we aiming at? Are we targeting the same as God wants us to target? In Acts 18, 24 to 28, we read about Apollos. Here we see Apollos as a good speaker. He knew the scriptures well. He was taught about the way of the Lord. He, he was excited when he speaks about Jesus. He knew John's baptism of repentance. And he was a bold speaker in the synagogue. But that's not enough. Here comes Priscilla and Aquila. They recognized the gift of Apollos. They saw the need of equipping Apollos. So what they did, they took him to their home to help him better understand the way of the Lord. Now, how did they equip Apollos? How did, what did they teach him? Well, we do not know. Look, the writer of Acts did not specify. But the result is outstanding. The result, Apollos helped others know Jesus Christ. And that's the bottom line. All of the training, all of the equipping boils down to our people knowing Jesus. That's the bottom line. Today, we need more Priscilla's and Achilles who will equip the next generation. As one of your missionaries, I conduct seminars for pastors and church leaders in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and even some parts of Asia and the Middle East. One of my seminars I call M&M, not the, the candy. It's mature and multiply. You have to mature first, then you multiply. If you are not maturing, please don't multiply. Because we will be multiplying immature people. I have four statements in this seminar. Number one, the growth of your church today is dependent on what we are doing with our leaders today. So let's ask pastors, church leaders, what are we doing with our leaders and potential leaders today? Not tomorrow, but today. What are we doing? The second statement, the growth of your church 10 years from now is dependent on what you are doing with your youth today. Are we discipling our youth? When I was uh, a youth, 70 pounds ago, I was disciple, and I was never the same again. Number three, 
the growth of your church 20 years from now is dependent on what you are doing with your children today. It's always today. What are we teaching? What are we training our children? What is the content of our training? And the last statement, the best way to grow a church is to develop Christ-like leaders. And the fastest way to develop Christ-like leaders is to develop them slowly. No shortcuts, no instant disciples, no ready-made Christ-like leaders. Now let's ask, how do we prepare the next generation? How do we equip them? The key process is to engage them. How? Teach them three main things. Lee Ayapoka, the former CEO of Chrysler USA, once said, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Now, there are three main things in the Bible. Number one, the great commandment. That's a main thing. That's the bullseye. That's our target. The Lord said in Matthew 22, 37, Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And that's a main thing. Let's ask ourselves, do I really love my Lord? How much do I love my Lord? The second main thing is the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them, teaching them to obey everything. There are many verbs here, but the main verb is make disciples. The going, baptizing, and teaching, they are weak verbs. The main verb is make disciples. Are we making disciples? And number three, the great reversal. The first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. We can only understand this in the context of servant leadership. What are the main things? Teach them to be lovers of God. Teach them to make disciples who will mature and multiply and teach them to be servant leaders of the church. These are our goals. These are our targets. These are the bottom lines. They are the bullseye. How? Show them how to do it. Teaching is good, but it's not enough. We have to show them by our life and our example. Like Priscilla and Aquila, equipping up Apollos by bringing him to their home. Can you imagine that? Like Paul in Acts 20, 24, he said, I don't care about my life. The most important thing is that I complete my mission to tell people the good news about God's grace. You see, I don't care about my life, he said. I don't care about my personal ambition. Well, the, what matters most is I bring the good news to these people. Our message is good news. But the sad thing is some people, some Christians, sometimes the messenger is bad news. That cannot be. The messenger is also the message. So we must live out the message of God's grace. 41 years ago, 1975, I accepted Christ as my Savior and Lord. One Sunday after worship, my disciple invited me to have lunch with him and his wife. They have no children yet at that time. We were walking after worship towards their apartment about six blocks away. When my disciple realized he has no money. He gave all of, all of his money to the church that Sunday. So he asked his wife, uh, do you have money? Because I know we don't have food in our refrigerator. Then the wife said, let me check. He got his purse and she said, yes, I have 10 cent apples. Oh no, silent. Yeah, he said. Um, 
force fasting today. As we walk, we started to pray. And my disciples started to sing and pray and even thank God. Upon reaching their small apartment, they opened the door. Lo and behold, an envelope on the floor greeted us. No me, just an envelope. When my disciple opened it, he smiled and praised God and said, Praise the Lord, we have lunch money. I said, thank you, Lord. No force lasting today. But right after that, I said, inside, Lord, I do not want to be a pastor. I cannot handle this. That's why I'm taking up engineering to provide well for my family. Six years later, I found myself enrolled in Asian Theological Seminary and pastoring a small church in Pasig, in Bagong Ito. That was 35 years ago. Why did I obey the Lord? Why did I become a pastor? Because someone invested his life on me. He taught me to love God above all. I love my girlfriend during that time. I love my parents during that time. But my love for God should be so high. If I compare my love with my girlfriend and my parents, with God, it will be as if I don't love my parents. It's as if I don't love my, my girlfriend. Because my love for God is so high. My disciple taught me to love God above all. He taught me, He showed me how to be a disciple of Jesus. And He challenged me to disciple others. His name is JSP. He's a missionary. He was a missionary of Jaya and JGC. Johnny Santil and Pavia. I often go to Mindanao because he is from there. I felt indebted. When, when Philip Flores would assign us, who would go to Mindanao? I would say, I will do it. Immediately, no questions asked. I am indebted. We Johnny is from Kabarbaran, Abu Santel Norte. So I felt indebted. Last June 26, two months ago, Abu 30, June 30, I conducted a seminar in the Polo City, Sambuanga del Norte. Then I traveled 160 kilometers to eat at Sambuanga Sibugay to conduct two seminars where 62 pastors and church leaders attended. Then traveled again 173 kilometers to Sambuanga City from Italy to conduct two seminars again to 54 pastors. After the seminar, one pastor in Sambuanga City commented, Pastor Roli, we must bring these seminars to Basila. We have about 50 pastors there. I said, I pray about it. When another pastor heard the conversation, he said, we have 70 pastors in Bodo, Pastor Roli. They need these seminars also. We will go. I said, Lord willing, next year I will go to Holo. Lamita and then Holo. I pray for this. Prayer is the force multiplier. Effective ministry starts with prayer. It is sustained by prayer. And when we pray, we can equip the next generation. We know what to teach. We can show them what we can do. But we also need to pray. Seven years ago, I was assigned here as a missionary to teach a Sunday school class. You know what class? Kinder. I am mentoring pastors and I will teach Kinder, Lord, what will I teach? That's my prayer. It, it was at that time I really prayed hard. What will I teach? Only five kids from Kinder will attend. And we were tasked to give a 10-minute Bible story, 
a 10 minute discussion of what we are doing and our prayer request. I did that. Then I asked, who would like to pray for me? I asked to find kids. Kinder class. Someone raised his hand. His name, this young boy, is Aldre Eden. And he said, Pastor Roy, I'll pray for you. You know, Aldre did not only pray for me at the time. He continued to pray for me. Every year, I would attend the mission conference, and he would look for me and tell me, Pastor Roy, I'm praying for you. He is now in grade 7. He's still praying for me. And I thank God for GGC, for teaching our children what, how to pray. I'm touched by Albert Aldrich's prayer. He's now in grade 7, and I know he's still praying. I thank God not only for Aldrich, but I thank God for the many people who are praying for each time. There are many times I'm in difficult situations. But you know God, because you pray, God is answering our prayers. I thank God for GBC. I thank God for the mission board of Jaya. I resigned my position at PCDC last February 1. But I'm still helping PCDC. So because of the policy, I'm no longer a missionary of grace during that time. But I be applied because I'm still with PCs. I'm still pastoring. I'm still helping pastors. I'm still equipping them in the song besides the Lord willing, by October, I'll be flying to Dubai and equip six churches there in Dubai, Filipino churches. And they are excited because I know that we'll do something. I thank God for the elders and the members of GTC. I know GGC, Jaya, is committed to equip the next generation. I thank God for everyone. God bless you all. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Your word is sharp that any two-edged sword, it will accomplish its purpose. Help us, Lord, to focus on what you want us to focus on. Help us, Lord, to seek, to discern the subtle shifts most, most churches are doing today. Help us, Lord, to do what you want us to do. Build your leaders, Lord, mature each one of us. And as we follow you, people, Lord, will never be the same again. Thank you, Father, for this church. In Jesus' name.